This is the number one thing that stops most men and most entrepreneurs from winning. Michael McLean, BrassBallsVideos.com. I am an ex-professional hockey coach, ex-amateur championship hockey coach, turned eight-figure entrepreneur. I am a husband, a father, and a small business owner just like you. If you'd like a free copy of my complimentary, brand new 22-page book, Five Ways to Unfuck Your Life in the Next 30 Days, you can download a complimentary copy below. It's in the description, brassballsvideos.com. Print it off, study it, let me know what you think about that. So, uh, also I'll warn you about the book. Uh, my brand new book is not every entrepreneur's cup of whiskey. I wrote this book two months ago for champions, not for chumps, for winners, not for whiners. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Remember, these videos take us about three hours to produce, about 45 minutes for me to walk around ranting like a lunatic throughout my different neighborhoods, two hours for my business partner, the great Mark andre LeBlanc, to uh, put them together and put them on BooTube. Uh, we have a simple rule, share the show, share the show. If you know somebody you find value, you find these are a mental kick in the pants for you, a wake up call, make sure you share them with other elite, generous and driven men who need to hear a positive message. Men, every day we're fighting with uh, censorship, being deplatformed, our voice being um, being snub, you know, snubbed out, and we're doing everything we can to get this message out. Please help us by sharing these daily videos. Share the show. So I have to start by sharing a story that happened to me this morning. When you're watching this video, it's Monday or Tuesday, early in this week. I'm shooting this video on Sunday early afternoon and uh, I didn't plan to talk or rant about this particular topic but uh, you know it's it's interesting the great Matt Fury says nothing really bad happens to a writer nothing really bad happens to a uh, a person who's writing or creating content so I'll go with that so this morning uh, after my morning road work I walk for about 70, 75 minutes on Sunday mornings, get in those 10,000 steps. I came back and I headed into town here in Canada where we live half the year. I go to Tim Hortons every morning and get one of those massive extra large uh, coffees. When I'm in Naples, uh, in the land of the free for half the year, I go to Dunkin' Donuts every morning. So if you're planning an assassination attempt, I wouldn't be very hard to target. You can pretty much find me at either of those places any time after 7 a.m. So today was no different. On Sunday morning, just a gorgeous morning here after my, after my walk, I headed in to grab a coffee before I do my reading and writing time. And the power was out in our small community. We live just outside of a town here on the lake. You can see the lake back there. We have a lake house here. Um, and we look four miles up the lake, but when I drove into town, which is about five or six minutes from here, the power had been out all evening and it wasn't going to come on until 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. So the first Tim Hortons I arrived at, it was closed. So I drove about another 10 minutes to the next Tim Hortons to grab my morning coffee. And when I arrived there, of course, you've got a big drive through lineup you've got a big in-store lineup i never use drive throughs anymore i insist on parking my truck and speaking to people and stretching my legs and walking in and talking to people i do not use comfortable drive throughs or any of that stuff anymore i force myself to talk to people old school old-fashioned whatever you want to call it i like to introduce little discomforts into my life so no drive throughs no home deliveries, none of that shit for yours unruly. So I'm standing in line, I walk in the Tim Hortons and the lineup's almost to the door and I see one of my 
allies standing at the front. He's about two or three people away from the front of the line. I don't say anything. I'm in my Sunday, mo I'm in my Sunday morning state where I'm just relaxed. I'm Mr. Chill. The one day of the week I just try to, you know, keep it under control. And uh, he's a he's the guy that that demoed. He's the demolition guy of our old lake house. So we rebuilt this gorgeous lake home from an old 200 year old cottage that I bought 15 years ago. And he's the guy that demoed it. So he's a small business owner. He's an entrepreneur and he's a demo guy. Um, visualize Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't know if you follow WWE or any of that stuff, but visualize Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's Kevin. And he's, he's up in the line there getting ready to get his coffee. I mean, this guy is hell bent for election. I mean, he demoed our cottage in 24 hours and then we were, it didn't leave a speck, didn't, didn't leave a, a sliver. It was like, it was never there. He's like, coach, how do you like my job? And talk about a leader on the work site. I mean, this guy, his business is in the city an hour from here, but he has a, he has a lake house here on the lake. So he's here on the weekends and I run into him from time to time. And every time I run into him, he's like, hey coach, you know, he's like, he cannot sit still. You think you're wound? This guy is wound for sound. And he's built like stone cold. He's got, he's about 55 years old. He's got the shaved bald head. He's got the black glasses on. Just a terrific guy, terrific husband. Terrific. He's got adult kids, but Stone Cold Steve Austin, heart of gold too, but intimidating, intimidating. You know, five foot ten, two hundred and twenty pounds kind of guy. Looks like he lives in the gym. So I'm standing way back, and I decide not to speak to him. And I'm watching what's going on. And these poor staff in the Tim Hortons are just like the Dunkin' Donuts people in Florida. All the people behind the till. This is seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning. They're all over the age of 50. Most of them are 60, 65. They should be retired, but they are, they're the only people left with any fucking work ethic. They're in there on a Sunday morning because, you know, the X's and the millenniums and the teenagers and the 20 somethings and the 30 somethings, they've been out all night working on their ethics or something. But so here you have a typical, typical retail restaurant, store, coffee shop, whatever you want to call it. And everybody behind the cash register is, you know, retirement age. So they're doing their best and they're understaffed. They're understaffed. They didn't know the other Tim Hortons is closed. They didn't know the electricity was out. They're doing the best they can. And they're old. I mean, one lady's in there changing the trash cans and she's shuffling along. And I'm like, God bless her. God bless her. You need to be doing something different than than this at your stage in the life, but she's there. She showed up and she's working. So, you know, a couple of people get their coffee and you know, they're unpleasant and they're impatient and uh, you know, and they're bitching and chewing and whining about how long it's taking to get their drink. It's Sunday fucking morning. It's Sunday morning. These people are doing the best they can. If you have a brain, if you have a functioning prefrontal cortex, you realize there's only five people behind the counter and they're looking after 500 people. But oh no, no, they're on their cell phones and hurry up and what's taking her so long. And, and this is where I get involved, right? Savage and a servant, badass and a servant. So I'm standing at the end of the line. I know Kevin very well. I like Kevin. But he's stone cold Steve Austin. I, I've never seen him in a situation like this. So it's his turn up next at the cash. And he goes up and I can hear him talking because he's got a baritone voice. He's a king. He's got some presence to him. And he says, yeah, I'm here to pick up my party coffee box. You know those boxes that you get at Dunkin' Donuts or you get at Starbucks and they have like, I don't know, 30 cups of coffee in them. They're a cardboard box with the little spout and you take them to church functions or club meetings or whatever and everybody gets coffee. They pour their coffee out of the box. So this poor lady behind the cash register, she's looking up at Stone Cold and she said, she comes back and she says she takes his money and he pays. And then she comes back and she says, I'm sorry, sir. She says, but we don't have your order. 
and I'm like, oh boy, oh boy. And, uh, you know, so he, he's standing there and all of a sudden this manager comes around the corner and she's no more a manager than Joe Biden is a leader. I mean, she comes around the corner, she's gotta be almost 70. Poor woman, I had compassion and empathy for her. And she comes around the corner and she tries to explain to Kevin how um, he ordered his coffee at the other Tim Hortons and that they don't, they didn't know it was closed, but he can't show up and he can't order this massive box of coffee without notice. Makes sense, right? So I'm just watching this combustible situation. And I mean, he's a guy who's like, he, he was born impatient. He's going to die impatient like I, like I am. And I'm just, I'm just watching this, right? So... Anyways, um, the lady comes out and she's like 70 years old and she's like, I'm sorry, sir, but you can't, uh, we need it 24 hours and we don't have the coffee and all this stuff, right? So I'm ready for him to go ape shit. I'm ready for him to go ape shit. Like the gammas, like the beta males, like the keyboard cowards. You know, it's an opportunity for him to, you know, get rid of all his frustration, all his anger. If he's not happy with his life, if he's not happy with his day, if he's not happy with his marriage, if he's not happy with his health, if he's not happy with his kids, if he's not happy with the election, then this is a chance to tear somebody the fucking down. Tear somebody down. He looks at her and he says, ma'am, that's perfectly okay. He said, uh, I paid at the cash, and he points to the cash. He said, I just need a refund. You should have seen this woman, her eyes were wet, right? You can tell when a person's scared. That's my business. I was in the pro hockey business. I've been around the hat uh, Hatfields and the McCoys. I've been, I've been in the wild, wild west for a good part of my life in business and sport. And I know when somebody's intimidated and I know when somebody's scared. And this poor manager, she comes around and all I, you could just see the relief when he said, that's perfectly okay. Um, I understand. I'm just going to get a refund and I'll be on my way. And literally, I never miss a thing I'm watching. He still doesn't know I'm there. And he walks up and they redo the visa. And they print it out and he signs it, right? And this is a guy with presence. This is a guy with presence. This is an alpha male. This is an entrepreneur. This is a husband. This is a father. This is a champion. This is a, I mean, this guy has presence. He's the stone cold Steve Austin of that, uh, of that building at that time. And I'll never forget it. The girl who waited on him, she's also got the worried eyes, right? These women have been up since 4.30 in the morning, maybe 4 a.m. They're in their 60s. They're working a job that, you know, there's no purpose. There's no calling. There's no nothing. They're just paying the bills. And they probably opened at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. And they've been trying to survive for the last four or five hours. And everybody that comes up there is agitated. They're upset. They're in a hurry. And they're just ready, they're ready to blow, right? And here's these, both these women, they're about ready to break down and cry. And he literally says, that's perfectly okay to the girl. Um, she gives him the refund and he goes, no, 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 no. He said, listen, he said, he took time. He goes, listen, he goes, it was my responsibility. He said, I called the other place and things happen. He said, the electricity's out. You guys don't know anything about that. So you don't know anything about my order. So he goes, this is perfectly fine. He said, he said, I, perfectly fine. He said, I have no problem. And these two women, because they were under so much stress, because they were feeling so intimidated, because they're feeling so stressed from five in the morning and the way people are, are treating them, they literally, their eyes both start to tear up. They're both standing at the cash and both of these women in their 60s are starting to tear up. And he's standing there and he's saying, 
Like, it's insane. He's like, I appreciate you trying to help me. I appreciate the service you gave me. Have a, have a blessed day. And out, out walks Stone Cold. And I just shook my head and my, my 11 year old was with me. And I said, I said, Emery, that's a master class in fucking class. I didn't swear. That's a master class in class. He had the opportunity to be a normie. He had an opportunity to be a gamma male. He had an opportunity to be a weak man. He had an opportunity to put on a show in front of everybody. He had an opportunity to get rid of all his frustrations. He had an opportunity to make himself feel better and big. What does a king do? He makes everybody around him better. He makes everybody else believe in themselves. And a king and a champion always sees people better than they even see themselves. I learned that as a pro coach from Wayne Max. He said, Michael, your job is not X and O's. It's not power plays. It's not penalty kills. It's not fitness. Your job every year, whatever team you have, is to make sure that every man, every athlete in that room, that you find a way to see them better than they see themselves. If you can do that, it'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy and you will always, always overachieve. Build self-esteem, build self-image, build confidence, make people feel better about themselves and make people in your world know that you believe in them. Your children want one thing, they want to know that you believe in them. Your wife that you're disconnected from, she wants to know that you believe in her. Grandchildren, they want to know that you believe in them. It's really that simple. And when he walked out of there, I was, it went quickly after that because they opened up another cache and I grabbed my coffee and I walked out and I always use these as great examples. I want my daughter to be around winners. I want her to be around lions. I want her to be around kings. I want her to be around queens. And we walk out and I'd explain to her what had happened and how he had just absolutely carried himself at a top 1% level, how he had changed the direction of those two women's lives, at least for that day, how he hadn't taken the opportunity to ruin them. You never know. When you say a kind word to somebody, you could literally be saving somebody's day or their life. When you say something negative or small-minded or cowardly or toxic, you could literally be ruining someone's day or you could be ending their life. That's the power. And a king knows that and a champion knows that and a lion knows that and a leader knows that. And my, fr my friend Kevin, I walked out, he was leaning against his truck and he didn't see me. He's like, hey coach. And he's one of those guys, eh? Like, got the energy. He's a giver of energy. People, he's magnetic. You want to be around him. You want to take off that ball cap and rub his bald head. And he shakes my daughter's hand. And he's got the he's got the bear mitts like my dad. And he's just larger than life. Stone cold Steve Austin. And I said, brother, I walk over. And I said, you, my brother, are the ultimate badass. He said, what are you talking about? And I said, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And I said, you leave things better than you found them, except for my cottage, which you beat the shit out of. And he laughed. He goes, I don't get it. He said, I was in the back of that line. And I said, I watched the way you made that, those two ladies feel, the way you gave them respect. You, you, you gave them respect, you gave them honor, and you, you did the opposite of what most other men would have done. And I said, everybody noticed. I said, you took full responsibility that it was on you, and you never blamed anybody else, you never whined, you never complained, you thanked them, you thanked them for trying to help you, you politely asked for your, for your refund. I go, manners and etiquette, open doors. You know, he said to me, he goes, he pointed to Emory, he said, and man manners and etiquette close doors. I said, yeah, you've read my book, brother. And I just said, I want to tell you how impressed Emory and I were by that performance when nobody's watching because that's who you are. You are who you are when nobody's watching. 
And I said, that's the ultimate job interview. That's the ultimate test of a man or a woman, who you are when nobody's watching. And I said, I said, I saw those women with the tears in their eyes and literally they were at the brink. They couldn't take it anymore from all of the, the pressure on them this morning, the no staff, I said, no help. And I said, you could have walked in there and you could have broken both of them. And God knows where that goes from then. And I said, as a king, as a badass, as a savage, you did the opposite. And he said, he said, that's the way I roll, brother. He said, they had nothing to do with what was happening. He said, it had nothing to do with them. He said, I'm a business owner, as you know. He says, I'm accountable for everything in my life. Those women did the best job they could. He said, I look like a fool. He said, returning to the lake house with no coffee. He said, but I'll deal with my wife about that. And he laughed. Man, oh man, if that's not the people you want in your life, I don't know who it is. People that take 100% responsibility, 100% accountability, and they make people, they build people up. They're givers, not takers. They're, they're kings, not vampires. And everything they touch, they make a tiny little bit better. Whether it's holding a door or smiling or, or, or cleaning a, ch a table or pushing in a chair. They make things and they leave things better than they found them. And they're just, I mean, they fill the room. They fill the room with, and they make everything they touch a little bit better. So great example, of course, for myself, a great example for my daughter. And I just wanted to share that story because with all this political stuff going on and elections and all the negativity, there's so many great people. There's so many great people, young, old, middle-aged, and we need to be reminded and to look out for it. And when you see it, make note of it. Make note of it to your kids, your teenagers, your queen, make note of it. And it's just a, an incredible thing when you see it. That was a master class in class. That was a master class in grace. That was a master class in mental toughness. That was a master class in professionalism. And that was ma a master class in how a real badass king behaves when nobody's watching. I did a master class last week. If you're interested in watching the free replay, there'll be a link below in the description. If you're interested in applying for my upcoming mastermind in August, it's money making and marketing. That's it. That's all. If, you, if that's your cup of tea, the link is also below badassbrotherhood.com, badassbrotherhood.com. And of course, my free book, you can download anytime at brassballsvideo.com. All of those links are below. All of those links below. My question to you, when you walk in your door, when you walk in your kitchen, when you walk in your office, when you walk in a church, when you walk in a restaurant, when you walk in a coffee shop, are you a giver or are you a taker? Are you a lion or are you a sheep? Are you a king or are you a chump? Are you a badass or are you a bootlicker? And today I just witnessed another reminder of how powerful it is, how many great, great people we have in this world and the impact we can have with our etiquette, with our manners, with our attitude and with the choices we make on how to treat people. Like my grandfather said, running a general store for 45 years, he goes, listen, son, you're going to meet the same people on the way up as you're going to meet on the way down. Never forget that. He said, son, he said, people will remember what you did. They'll remember what you said. They'll never, ever, ever, ever forget how you made them feel. Two words that change my life, two words that'll change yours. Be relentless.